So I've had the King's lithium battery in my four wheel drive travel system for over a year now. And I've had the chance to use it in all different climates and conditions across Australia, from snow to desert. It's empowering fridges, induction stoves, laptops. It's even powered my house at one point. Now, a lot of people are very skeptical about this battery and rightfully so. It's gonna be one of the most asked questions I get. And today I'm gonna to tell you my true experience with one of the cheapest 12 volt lithium batteries on the market, the King's 120 amp hour lithium battery. Now, it's no secret that King's gear is cheap, but that's the main reason we buy it, right? My current 12 volt system has been built on a budget and pretty much all of it is King's gear because it's pretty good value for the money. I've currently got their battery, DC DC charger, inverter, and even their solar panel. But this is possibly the best product Kings have made to date, yet hardly anyone seems to talk about it. Now, it wasn't long ago that these things costed thousands of dollars. I mean, I remember when I was building my first 12 volt system, I couldn't justify buying a lithium battery purely because the price was so high. Like we're talking well over a thousand dollars for a 100 amp hour lithium battery. But in the last year, things are beginning to change. When this battery first released, it retailed for $8.99. Now you can get it for $5.99. And usually you can get it on sale for less than that, under 500 bucks. Whenever I was asked, is buying a lithium battery worth it? I'd reply with, if you still got your old AGM and it's still working, save your money and wait till that dies. But if you're fresh into the market for a new 12 volt battery, lithium is the only way to go in my opinion. Unless you have some special requirements that require you to have a lead acid, for example, engine bay mounting. But for the vast majority of us, lithium is the future for secondary batteries. From my personal experience, having a lithium battery has drastically improved our 12 volt setup. I went from barely being able to keep the camp lights on for multiple nights to cooking full-fledged meals with 240 volt power. The biggest difference for me has just been the amount of power stored in the battery and being able to actually access all 120 amp hours, which with your old AGMs, as soon as you began to draw a bit of power, the voltage would get low, your appliance would hit voltage cutoff thresholds, and you'd be in the dark in no time. The depth to charge of lithium is the real game changer for me. But other things such as the weight difference and longer lifespan are huge factors, especially if you're putting it in a four wheel drive for camping and touring. Now, there are a few things to remember when you want to buy a lithium battery. First is heat sensitivity. These are sensitive to temperature, so if they go beyond their thresholds, they won't charge or discharge properly. Secondly, you'll need a DC-DC charger that can charge the lithium battery in its correct charging profile. And thirdly, these batteries are a lot more sophisticated than your lead acid or AGM. They've actually got a BMS or battery management system built into them, which monitors temperature, cell voltage, and regulates the charging and discharging. So it's handy to know that that's in here because the battery can behave a little differently. For example, if your battery runs completely flat and the BMS shuts down, you'll notice that your DC-DC charger won't detect that there's a battery there and thus won't charge the battery and bring it back to life. You can easily jump the battery to get a load back onto it so it starts charging, but it's just a thing to keep in mind when you own a lithium battery. Now, when you go to buy a lithium battery, there are that many brands out there, it can be really hard to know what to buy. There's names you've never heard of for really cheap prices, and then there's names you have heard of, but they're quite expensive. And then there's Kings. Now, compiling all the pricing from current 12 volt lithium batteries, Kings stands out as one of the best prices for a named brand. And yes, I'm not saying that Kings has the best brand reputation. You all know I've had issues with their gear in the past, but at least with Kings, there's a physical shop you can go back into and demand your money back. Whereas, I don't like your chance of some of these no-name battery brands that exist on the internet. Now, unfortunately, I can't speak much on the other more expensive name brands as I haven't had a chance to use them, but I've had this King's Lithium battery in my setup now for over a year, and I've spent a lot of time with it, from being on the road to the building of my current 12 volt system. So I know every little looking crate into this setup and how the battery reacts to charging, providing power to a vast number of different devices. I also know what happens when it doesn't go to plan and the battery dies or your earth cable comes loose. I've experienced pretty much every single scenario with this battery, so let me tell you how it's been and if I'd recommend it. Firstly, the weight. So just like all lithiums, this thing is light. And in comparison to my old AGM battery, this thing literally weighs half, going from 30 kilos down to 15. So the weight saving alone will be a huge recommendation for this battery. Now, when buying a cheaper 12 volt battery, it's important to know you're actually getting what you paid for. For example, there's been various posts online about cheap online batteries showing up with filler inside of them and pretending to be 100 amp hours when they're actually only a 60 amp hour battery. 
So ensuring your battery isn't a straight up scam is important. Now, I haven't pulled this thing apart and looked through the individual cells, but the people on the internet who have are all reporting back that in fact, yes, this battery is what it claims to be, and it's actually pretty well constructed and put together. And for someone to say that about a King's product is a good sign in my books. I've got my little 12 volt diagnostics panel on the side there, so I've been able to monitor the power leaving the battery. So I fully charged it, disconnected my solar and ran it dead, and I got it down to something like 11.4 volts and it had used 114 amp hours. So I went to check it later, but it was dead, so I didn't get a final result. But from what I've seen online and what I've experienced in person, people are getting around the 120 amp hour mark, if not exceeding it. Now, another factor that makes moving to a battery like this very appealing is the battery's lifespan. This lithium battery is rated to 2000 cycles. So that's going from 100% fully charged down to zero and back to 100, 2000 times. And to put that in perspective, you would need to flatten your battery every day for five and a half years. So assuming it meets that, that alone makes getting a battery like this very compelling. Now, a lot of people ask, okay, well, how well does it charge things? Is it that much of a difference? So let me show you some of the things I can run while camping and how long this battery lasts. My 12 volt setup has been able to grow immensely after moving to lithium. Not only can I have more appliances, I can have them running for longer, my battery charges faster and more efficiently. And due to the huge storage density of lithium, I've had the ability to run full-fledged 240 volt induction cooking while on the road camping. I've even pushed my setup to the limits, running part of our family home while the power was offline. I was able to run fridges, PCs, lights, Wi-Fi. It's been a big step up in the amount of power and possibilities of my 12 volt setup. Now, I'll run you through the figures on just how long I've been able to run each appliance for. Now, these figures are very general and can change a lot depending on a lot of factors, such as what else is running in the car, if you charge the battery by driving that day, if you've got solar panels on the roof, and even environmental factors such as the temperature. So just use this as a rough guide to see if 120 amp hours is enough for you. Now, my camping style is pretty nomadic. The longest we'll stay stationary in a single place is usually two to three nights, but I have done longer. So let me show you how much power I can use starting with the fridge. Now running a big 95 litre 12 volt fridge with a freezer on one side, fridge on the other, you can roughly get around four to five days with a fully charged battery. But if you add a small 110 watt panel like what I've done, it'll run continuously nonstop without the need to start the car. This car has sat literally in the driveway for weeks without starting and the fridge never turns off. So fridges with a bit of solar, you can run them forever. Camp lights, I have no issues running at all. I only use them for a few hours each night and I barely notice the draw. Phones and all that are no issues at all either. Even items such as laptops, um, they actually don't draw a lot of power even though they use the 240 volt inverter. Like you can be in the bush, plug it in the charge every day and you'll be able to do that for multiple days until you start to notice any significant drop in charge. The faithful travel buddy. Now, we use this a heap. Now, if you do remember, we actually run this through a 15 volt step up converter, so it heats up the oven faster, um, but it does draw more power. Now, we use this a lot while we're driving, so it doesn't really affect the battery that much, but when we do get to a can spot, we wanna stay for a couple of nights. I have been able to use it for dinner each night for about two to three hours without an issue. The 240 volt induction cooker. Now, after a full day of driving, we can run the induction cooker for two to four meals, depending on cook time, these things do draw a ton of power, so it'll suck the battery hard, but if you're only planning on staying at the same spot for a night or two, 120 amp hours is enough to cook a few meals. And that includes running all your other accessories such as fridge, camp lights, chargers, all that. So we've got a 2000 watt inverter, so we've had no issues running the cooker at 1800 watts or under. I'd say if you move it around camp a lot and you're not staying in the same spot for more than two to three nights, 120 amp hours is enough to run these 240 volt appliances sparingly. But if you're really keen on doing a lot of induction cooking, I would seriously consider getting a bigger size battery, maybe 200 amp hours, as the induction stove just draws a hell of a lot of power and you won't be able to camp in the same spot for a whole week and have enough power to keep the stove going. All the other camp gear accessories you'd be fine with, it's just the induction stove. It's a real power drawer. And for those wondering how long it takes to charge the battery, I've got a 25 amp DC DC charger. So if you do the math on that, it's around five hours of driving to a full charge from a dead battery. So if you were looking to charge it faster, you can get a bigger DC DC charger, for example, a 40 amp or a 50 amp, as the battery can recharge at 100 amps current. 
I found the 25 amp charger to be sufficient, but I think if I was to do it again, I'd get a bigger charger. Just in case I wanted to quickly charge the battery, I could simply turn on the car and let it run for a bit. So we've covered the benefits of lithium, talked about how it performs in the real world and what size you'd need. Now, what brand do you buy and how much do you spend? Well, that's really up to you. My experience with the King's lithium battery has been really good. Now, I did have some teething issues at the start as I struggled to run some 240 volt appliances, but I since changed the wiring for my inverter to make it go straight to my battery instead of going through my shunts and my distribution block, and I haven't had an issue since. At its price, it is extremely good value for money, and it's been an extremely reliable battery too. It's done everything I could have asked out of a lithium battery at an affordable price. And it's been the same story with the DC-DC charger, the inverter, the solar. I've had no issues with any of it. And I think for the price, it's a great option for those wanting to get into a lithium travel setup without having to break the bank. After actually using this battery for an entire year, I can recommend it. If you're looking for a lithium battery on a budget, I think the King's battery is actually a really good choice. But I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts. Let me know your experience with Kings and tell me, have you moved to lithium yet? I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like and we'll see ya in the next one.